Another week, another video, guys. This week, we're going to review the Zygmatech Aqua Ultra case sent out to us by Zygmatech, free of charge. My thoughts and opinions are our own. It's not actually out on the market at this moment in time, so I'm interested to see. Is it another Leon Lee lookalike? Does it do it as well? Does it not? Let's share with you my experience and let's review this together. Let's do this. Obviously, this, guys, is not the Aquarius Plus or the Aquarius Pro. But as you can see, it's been very, 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 very well packaged here. So I'm hoping... Oh, this sellotape everywhere. This is going to take ages to get in. I'll be back shortly. Can I pick it up? Yes, I can. Don't drop it. Oh. Oh. Let's get rid of them. And I've not actually seen this case before, guys, either. So I'm quite intrigued to find out what it's actually going to look like. It looks like I've got it on its side. This looks like it's the bottom. Da -da! There we go. Okie dokie. Looks like we've been given a few other additional things in here as well. But on first inspections, it does look like one of the Leon Lee dynamic cases with a few changes and we'll go through them in a minute because automatically it's more like a fish tank. We've got our glass top, our glass front and our glass side. On this side, a full kind of vented meshed side panel. And on the front here, we've got our USB-C, two USB 3s, our microphone and headphone jack, two, uh, two USB 2s, a dedicated LED button uh, for our RGB, a reset button and our power switch as well. And as you can see inside this particular case, we have already got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 10 fans. Now this is the review model guys. It will only come with seven pre-installed fans included. So let's take off this panel here. Let's have a look at these included accessories as well. Right, first, first check. Do the thumb screws need a screwdriver? No, they don't. And they are captive as well, which is even better. Quite a thick side panel there. And really, really nice in terms of ventilation there as well. Right, okay, so we've got plenty of room for our cables, which is good. I can see that we can put a couple of SSDs back here and a couple back here, so you can fit four SSDs. We can also fit four uh, three and a half inch hard drives in these two bays as well. But yeah, nothing too extravagant at the back, guys. Again, if you wanted to put a radiator back here, then you could do that as well, not a problem at all. Fantastic that the fans have already come installed. Again, this has got 10 in it, you will only get seven for the retail version, but ultimately, decent size cut out here. Fantastic, I love the rubber grommets, guys, especially on my Leon Lee XL. The rubber grommets not only help uh, the cable management side of things, but just take away them sharp edges when you're pushing delicate cables through as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So it's nice to see that there's two up here. There is three on the side, which is good down there and then there is an additional two down the bottom so all round in terms of grommets absolutely brilliant so just a quick demonstration let's just say that you don't have any ssds and you don't have uh, any hard drives and you need lots and lots of room for let's say a large power supply and i must say guys summer has come and it's been like 30 degrees today so if i start sweating I do apologize, but four screws. And then we have our hard drive bay, which is out. And again, two hard drives, three and a half inch ones there and two SSDs can be mounted to them. So for our power supply guys, we're going to be looking at um, 230, 240 
um, millimeters. So about 24 centimeters in length for your actual max power supply, allowing you obviously your cable bends to come out of the back of your power supply, unless you're using one of the new Corsair ones where obviously they come out the front, a little bit easier to cable manage. But overall from the back guys, no problems at all. I do like the fact that all your cable connections are off the top here. You've not got them running across from the front here as well. So you should be able to cable manage these pretty nicely down here. In terms of the connections on the front with our USB 2s, we've got our USB 2, our USB 3, we've got our USB type C, a nice flat cable as well, our HD audio, and then our normal LED reset power switch buttons as well. So Overall, not too bad. In terms of quality, I would say okay, not the best. Um, but there again, obviously this gains its rigidity when it's screwed down into position, so not too bad at all. In terms of screws, let's have a look at those. None of them have been scratched up or anything like that. In terms of the case itself, plastic peels as you would expect all the way around, again, None of these screws have got marks on them or anything like that, which again is really, really good. So let's take off our top panel. Again, two, th Ooh, I was gonna say two captive thumb screws, but unfortunately these two screws are a little bit too tight to undo. So we'll just give that a slight undo there. Couple of turns and we'll get these off. There we go, so that's our top glass panel. Our front can't come off until our side comes off, so we'll take our side off. Again, exactly the same as the Leon Lee. Taking a look at the included controller, guys. The one thing I would say to Sigma Tech is, we're 2023 now, guys, and I appreciate the fact that you've included seven fans. We'll have a closer look at one in uh, a couple of minutes. But one thing I really, really hate, is that you've got these proprietary connectors and these are six pin connectors. And it's great that they're RGB fans. Having to use your own controller, again, good that you've included it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this controller can control eight fans. It's also got two inputs for if you're wanting to control any five volt addressable headers or anything like that. So you can connect other things that require those five volts. You've also got on the back here, an opportunity to actually control the, the actual RGB controller and hook it up to a five volt addressable header on your motherboard, which again is a good and nice inclusion, but you're not going to get PWM control out of these fans and ultimately, the controller itself can only control eight fans, but the actual case, three, six, nine, ten. Now that might be why they've included an additional controller here, and um, due to the fact that this particular one has got ten, it might be the case that they give you three, six, and then one at the top, or the one at the rear here, and then they automatically assume that you're going to put an automatic all-in-one in here with three different fans that needs its own controller etc etc and if that's the case got no problems with that whatsoever i just think that their controller should have been able to control 10 fans and then it would have made slightly more sense no rattle noise no shaking or anything like that and i do quite like that so in order to get that off two little pushes and then it can just come out like that i do quite like that Again, another slight thing I wanna point out here, guys. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six of the standoffs that are required uh, for your motherboard. Most motherboards require nine, uh, dependent on whether they've got a center pin or not. I can see automatically that this case doesn't house a center pin, so just be wary if you are going to be installing this with your case upright, putting your motherboard in, then you're gonna to have to have three hands in order to do it. I would also start, like to see, guys, that you've got all of these standoffs in place. Not everybody uh, has got uh, a little socket or a wrench to be able to put these in. And not only that, if you're gonna be buying a case, and I'll come to price slightly a little bit later on, 
you don't want to be installing these and potentially scratching the insides of here up or even scratching your standoffs off. You want them pre-installed. Most people want to whack the motherboard in and then move on to the next step. They don't want to have to be messing around. Now, it's great that you've got the modularity in order to house either a mini uh, ITX all the way through to uh, MATX motherboards. But what you can actually do is you can extend this motherboard tray by one, two, three screws on the side here, and then that would allow these MATX motherboards. But in terms of ATX, you should be absolutely fine, and to ITX, no issues whatsoever. So it would just be nice to see them included. So just going through fan configurations and radiator positions, guys, to give you an idea, this particular case, you can put a 360 radiator at the bottom, on the side, and at the top. So it will also house three 140 mil fans at the top. And as you can see here, we've got 10 120 mil fans all housed in here as well. In terms of GPU configurations, you'll have no problems with regards to any of the GPUs that's currently out there at this moment in time. Uh, you've got a max length of around 430 millimeters in here. So should have no issues whatsoever. From a CPU point of view, by the time you've got your motherboard in place, you've got a max height of 185 millimeters as well. If you put in something in there like a Noctua or you've got one of these Ventru V5s or even an Arctic Freezer 34 Duo Esports, something like that, you'll have no problems whatsoever either. These cases really, really struggle with, not this particular case, but these types of cases are this. We've removed that center, uh, that center panel down here, or that angled bead down the side of here. And from a, a rigidity point of view, you would, in actual fact, that's really bloody good. Absolutely, really, really good. And I don't know whether that's because the fans are already pre-installed, but there is literally, there is a little bit of movement, but nothing of any concern whatsoever for me. Um, I thought that that might be a little bit flimsical, but in actual fact, it's not, and that's really pleasing. So in terms of the fan configurations, if this was my computer, I would definitely be having the bottom three fans as an intake. Um, you've got two options, really. I would always have the, the back exhaust fan, um, no problems at all, which then leaves you with three here and three at the top. Now, I always work on the definition of hot air risers and I would always prefer to have my 360 mil radiator at the top as an exhaust. Some people don't like that and they like their 360 mil cooler on the side, bringing in fresh air and then it pushes in uh, a little bit warmer air. But at least then the CPU is being cooled by the ambient temperature of air outside of the case. So you've really got two options exhaust at the top or as an intake on the side either I don't think you'll have any problems with but I do think the side would be slightly better in this particular case because we've got a glass side panel a glass top panel and a glass front panel as well but that nicely brings me on to this additional little box here that came with the box and I did reach out to Zygmatech and I said to them I can foresee some temperature problems here and without being negative I want to make sure that I give a fair and transparent opinion on the case looks great as a fish tank but temperatures are definitely going to soar it's going to be like a hot box in there especially if you're running something like a 3900k and an RTX 4090 you know what it's like guys temperatures just rise so the one good thing that they've actually said to me is included in the sale of these particular cases, they're also going to include one of these, which is, I think, fantastic, guys. You've got the opportunity to run your all-in-one at the side, and you could even do intake on the top or as an exhaust with the glass panel. Wouldn't really make much sense, but that's more for the aesthetics showcase pieces and whatnot. This is more for the temperature sensitive ones. So what we can do is remove that glass top panel and replace it with this vented one, which I think really, really looks nice as well. 
And not only that, it gives you that extra little bit of value added service where they've took into consideration temperatures might be something that people are into. Absolutely. When you've gone out there and spent upwards of a thousand, two, three thousand pounds, you want to be maintaining them temperatures, keeping them as low as possible, but maintaining the best aesthetic you can as well. So having this top panel here, not having to go out there and purchase it as a separate piece included in the actual case, I think is a really nice touch from Zygmatech. And one thing that I did massively forget is even the GPU in terms of the orientation. You can actually undo these four screws here. This whole GPU uh, mount and bracket all turns around. So you've got loads of PCIe slots here. And inside the case, we've already discussed that you can fit up to 430 millimeters in terms of length. But by the time that actually moves, you won't ha actually have your GPU so close to this glass front panel as well, which most of them you see that are right up against the glass panel. Temperatures are going to choke the actual GPU and obviously spike as well. So having so many options and being able to move that modular piece around, you'll be absolutely fine. But yeah, I really like that as well. In terms of the bottom, you'll see down here, guys, we've got these four chrome feet. Again, none of them which are loose, which is good. And then we've got this vented bottom um, sheet panel here as well. So these can pull air freely from underneath the case into the actual case as well. Again, nice inclusion. So guys, after first inspections, there's nothing that I really don't like. Um, there are a few slight things. I think that the fans, while it's great that they're included, having them proprietary connectors, meaning that you've got to have the different hubs is a bit of a nightmare. Um, and I'm not a big fan of that. I think that for somebody that doesn't want to go out and actually purchase additional fans, then it's great. Um, but I don't know. I would rather have um, the ability to the fans to be controlled by a different controller. Again, it's a great thing that the controllers and the RF remote is included. That's not a knock at all. I just think that yeah, um, in terms of the fans, they're going to do the job. Um, are they going to be as good as the likes of Leon Lee fans or Corsair fans or Fantec fans or any premium fans? No, they're not. And that's the truth. The whole point of these reviews, guys, are to give you my fair and transparent opinion. So great that they're included. Would I would I match them against anything else? No, I wouldn't. And that's that's the honest truth. And that kind of brings me on to the rest of the case, in all honesty. Um, from my point of view, again, there wasn't really anything other than the fans that I didn't really like. I love the stability of the case. I love the fact that they give you a glass panel. Not that it's going to do anything in terms of performance. It's more for the aesthetic side of things. But including that mesh top panel, I would definitely then... Uh, have my 360 radiator um, at the top. That's just my personal opinion. Again, you could have it on the side. The great thing about this case, it gives you that modularity. 360 at the bottom, side, top, no problems at all. Seven fans, 10 fans, however you want to do it. Radiator at the back, um, behind those three fans as well, no problem. The ability to turn that GPU, have it vertically or horizontally, no problem at all. I love this, this um, actual front glass panel mechanism. It's not as flimsy as the Leon Lee one. So I think that's a good upgrade. I love the fact that you've not got a bar here and you've not got that uh, flexibility in the movement there. I think that's really, really good. Um, I love the fact at the top up here, um, you've got the USB-C, you've got the two USB-3, the two USB-2, your headphone jack, your microphone jack, everything that you could want up there. And you can even wire the fans to this LED button on the front of the case as well. So you don't even need the RF um, remote or the sync cable to your motherboard. Just depends. It gives you those options. In terms of the back, I think there's plenty of room uh, for cable management. I'm not a big fan of the hard drive base, but it gives you the options of mounting up to four SSDs or four hard drives at three and a half inch. No problem at all. 
PSUs, plenty of room, 220 mil, 230 mil, something like that. You'll be absolutely fine with anything up to like a, an HX 1500. Again, dependent on whether you need that particular room. The back panel, allowing that intake for the side. Again, I think it's a great touch. And overall, guys, I actually really, really like the aesthetics of it, removing that glass panel, of course. Is the build quality as good as the Leanne Lee case? The answer is no, it's not. Um, the glass crystal panels here, absolutely fine. I actually dropped one um, as I was putting it on the floor there earlier on. Didn't break. I've got hard wooden flooring, no problems at all. Did fall flat, so we had no issues. Um, yeah, overall, I didn't have any scratches or any defects or anything like that. Is the logo on straight? Yep, it is. I've not actually put the side panel on correctly because I was rushing to do it. Um, but yeah, all in all, no defects, no scratches, no screws, no things which are in the wrong places. I love all the grommets and things like that. I like the fact that they give you everything. ITX, Mini ITX, ATX, MATX, um, all of it. And the last thing I didn't actually mention was in terms of when you're mounting these fans up here, a really, really good thing is it's got a bracket that you can actually just pull out and slide in as well, which I think if you're installing an uh, all-in-one up there is, again, a really good thing because once you've got that installed, sometimes it's a nightmare to get your, your EPS cables through and plug on your CPU fan headers and things like that. So, again, I really, really like that. So, that brings us on to the cost, guys. And... I think taking everything into consideration, I think Sigma Tech's missed, missed it slightly because they had a real opportunity to look at what Lian Lee did and kind of change some of the things in terms of modularity, tool, uh, tool of support and added extra bits and bobs here. And don't get me wrong, I think some of the things that they've included are better than what my uh, Leon Lee XL case has done. I think where it's slightly gone wrong is Leon Lee's, as a business, they're always looking to improve, guys. And I've got the XL case. They then came out with the upgraded case over that, which gave you the full modularity and could allow you to mount your GPU here, there, and bloody everywhere else. And again, there's another iteration, in fact, three reiterations of the Lian Lee case that's, uh, or the Dynamic Co 11 case that's coming out in the not too distant future as well. So, yes, I think whilst I really, really like this case, in terms of cost, I didn't actually get the cost to come through and uh, I wasn't told how much it is, but I have just had a, a sneaky preview on a couple of other reviews and this is retailing from anywhere between $159 and $199. Now, if you're located here in the UK, dollars, pounds, very much a muchness. And essentially, if it was $159, you're looking at £160 here in the UK. And yeah, I think that's going to be the sticking block, guys, because whilst I really, really like the case, the included fans are no added value to me because I would simply take them out and put some high performance fans in there. And then essentially I'm just doing a, a comparison between the cases. And as I said, I like some of the aspects of what they've done here. The build quality is not quite up to the same standard as uh, my Excel case. Um, so I'd, I'd expect then the cost to be slightly less uh, to compensate that. But unfortunately on this occasion, that's not the case. So would I recommend this case? Um, it all depends, guys. It all depends. If you're looking for an absolute showcase stopper in terms of just pure out aesthetics and you're looking for more of a fish tank look and you're not bothered about the performance on it and anything like that, then I think that this case would look absolutely amazing, especially sat up there with all the RGB, the 360 degrees that uh, you actually can look at it. I think it would look absolutely fantastic. In terms of performance, again, you would have to remove this top panel, but that's why they've given you an additional uh, one that you could actually get with regards to the case. That would increase airflow, reducing temperatures down. Um, but yeah, if you're going to say you could have this one or this one, 
as much as I like this and I think they've made some good changes, I would still opt for my Leon Lee XL at this moment in time. So still chances for Zygmatek to get back to that drawing board, change some of those little things and sometimes they're the ones that really, really matter. And like I said, there's some really, really nice things in here and I'm looking forward to actually doing a build in this particular case. And I don't think we're gonna have any issues once we took off this glass top panel as well. So I wanna say a massive shout out to Zygmatek for sending this one out for a review. They've got some really, really budget orientated cases right all the way up through to this one as well, guys. So go check out Zygmatek. I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to go and check them out. I'm sure they've got something there for all different types of budgets, fans included, controllers here, there and everywhere as well. So no hate from me. In actual fact, it's nice to see a, a different reiteration of the 011. I think that it would have hit the mark at the right price point. It's slightly more expensive than what I was expecting, but I still think you're getting a quality product. Obviously, I haven't tested out the temperatures, but that being said, I don't think with the right fan configurations and AIO placements that you should have any problems whatsoever. But thank you very much for your time, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash that like button, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.